Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today it's time for another chunky check-in. If you are new to me, one of the things that I like to do on this channel is read big chunky books. <laughs> I really enjoy a long read and so I created this series so I could talk to you guys about some of the longer books. For me, when I say a chunky read, I mean a book that is 500 pages plus and um, a lot of them are fantasy, but not all. Uh, and I just like to talk to you guys about them. I talk to you guys about my ratings and I just check in with you when I have about 10 reads. And this is the fourth episode of Chunky Check-Ins. So I am excited to talk to you guys about another 10 chunky books, most of which I really loved. And I hope that uh, I can convince you guys to pick up some of these bigger books if maybe you found some of them intimidating. The first book I read at the very end of last year and that is The Labyrinth's Heart. So this is the third book in the Rook and the Rose series is what it's called. And the first book is Mask of Mirrors, if you guys are interested. They all have these beautiful covers. Um, all of them are just different colors. And being that this is the finale, the third book in the series, I can't tell you much about the plot. So I will just talk to you guys about Mask of Mirrors. And I've talked about that series a little bit on this channel. It has a Venetian setting. And I would say that if you guys are a fan of found family, I, I think that this series is amazing for that trope. You follow a character named Ren, who is essentially a thief. She has her sister Tess with her and they are trying to pull over a con on a noble family to essentially steal all the money they can get to then live a life of luxury away uh, and on their own. So throughout the story you get to see Ren get into this web of lies and con artistry with this family. And you also get to learn about the nobility. You get to learn about the world and the magic systems. There are two major magic systems in this world. And you, this, it's just a massive series. You eventually figure out that the noble family that she is trying to con has no money. And she also, you also figure out you get to be in Rid's head a little bit and see her perception of nobility and some of her past and where she's come from and get to see her connect with a lot of people that you wouldn't expect. A lot of friendships are formed throughout this three book series that are just so genuine and lovely that in the first book you would have thought there's no way that that's going to happen. And I just, I really have loved that aspect. I have loved the cast of characters that you that you get to know. I even, these characters hold a special place in my heart because as I was reading the first one, Mask of Mirrors, you, this is very dense fantasy and like each book has its own glossary at the back uh, that tells you how to pronounce things and how like, you know, just the definitions of the words because there is so much extra fantasy stuff in all of these. And so I would recommend if you guys have read fantasy before and you're looking to get into something a little bit more complex, maybe try this out. And I would suggest that if you get into the first book and you feel like you're confused, push through a little bit because I really had to adjust my expectations of knowing everything and understanding everything eventually it all comes into play or all falls into place and you understand what's going on but there will definitely be times that you're going to be like i don't know what that word means or i don't know what that specific item is or what it represents to this society it was a lot of fun uh, to figure all that stuff out along the way i didn't say this before but that was a five star read so if it wasn't obvious i absolutely loved uh, the Rook and the Rose series in general. I think all of them got a five star for me. If not, I know that the second one did. The first one may have been a four or 4.5. I can't remember because I read that one a long time ago. I read that one when it first came out. It wasn't that long ago, but I don't remember what my rating was. Um, so at least two of the three books in the series have gotten a five star for me and I, I really enjoyed it. The next is also the third uh, in a series and the kind of culmination to a series, and that is The Heir of Navron. This is the third book in the Rayura Revelations series, 
and this was my first I believe my first Michael J. Sullivan or not sorry not this book but like this series was my first Michael J. Sullivan and I am excited to get into more of his and oh my gosh this book is just it feels lovely in my hands don't you just love like a big floppy chonky read anyway <laughs> getting distracted. I've talked to you guys a lot about this series. Uh, this was in one of my, this is in my top series of the year list. And um, I absolutely love Royce and Hadrian, who are the two men that you follow in the series. And being once again, that this is the <laughs> culmination of a series, I can't really tell you much about the plot of this. But the series in general, you follow two men who are at the very beginning, at the in the first book, they are approached to steal an item. And as they go about the process of getting this item for this person, they get kind of embroiled in kingdom politics, something that they were not intending on doing. And they essentially have to help steer the kingdom in a specific direction. And the antics that these two get up to, the love that they have for each other throughout the book, is just amazing and I had so much fun with it. The kingdom is very complex but it's also even though they're chonky reads they read really quickly and the characters in them just pull you in. I've absolutely loved the series. I actually plan on reading the Ryra Chronicles this year which I think is a prequel series to this so uh, I'm hoping to get to know Hadrian Royce's backstory because you get to know a little bit of that about that in this um, but yes I, I just love I love two rough and gruff characters who you would not expect to have such a friendship and love for one another and they get themselves into pickle after pickle and have to help each other out and or have other people help them out. It's it's amazing. I, I absolutely had fun with the series. And once again, this was a five star. <laughs> if I didn't say that already. Next was a reread and that is Well of Ascension. Sadly, I don't actually own a copy of the Mistborn trilogy. I need to alleviate this issue, but I have been waiting patiently because I, I do want to get the new covers and I just haven't been able to buy the whole trilogy and I want to buy them all together. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so I read The Well of Ascension, which is the second book in Mistborn Era 1, and I rated it five stars. Again, I absolutely love Mistborn. This was my, I think, second book that I read from Sanderson or series I read from Sanderson. I started with Stormlight, which I don't necessarily <laughs> recommend. Uh, even though I love Stormlight, I don't know that that would be a good gateway into Sanderson. I definitely think Miss Warren is uh, a good a good place to start if you haven't read any Brandon, Brandon Sanderson. So if you guys haven't heard of Mistborn, you follow a character named Ven, who is a street urchin, and she lives in a kingdom where the dark ruler has won and there is kind of a revelation coming or revolution coming <laughs> or revelation whatever and you get to see her in this kind of group of thieves and she has a special power that she is not aware of what it is at first but she knows that it has helped her get out of a lot of tricky circumstances and she essentially is found by someone who can help her with this set of skills that she has and uh, she gets involved in the revolution of her kingdom. It, you follow her in like the group of people that are helping revolt. I, I have I've had a lot of fun with the series and uh, upon reread I've been listening to audio and I do recommend the audio so if you guys are not really a fan of the chonky books I do think that the audiobooks of these read really quickly and it's it's Sanderson is a very consumable fantasy there there aren't a lot of complex words or linguistics it's it's pretty I don't want to call it simple because that's that's not how I would describe it, but it's it, it's very easy to consume um, via audio. The next books I will talk about two at once because they are part of a series and I've read two of them so far. One of those is The Furies of Calderon and one of those is The Academ's Fury. So these are both in the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher and I rated the first book Furies of Calderon four stars. I rated Academ's Fury 4.5. If the series continues the way that Academ's Fury is, the next book will be a five star for me. I have loved 
getting to know this world and the characters. The second book really drew me in, especially towards the end. There was a lot of action and you get to know the characters obviously because you have these two really chunky books. So how can you not get to know them when you have so many pages with them? And the kingdom is becoming more and more complicated and the, I don't want to call them villains, but like the, <laughs> maybe I should just call them villains, but the bad guys in this were absolutely fantastic and creepy. And there were multiple inst or multiple things that you were looking at as the, um, problem in the kingdom. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Furies of Calderon, you start with following Amara, who is, uh, oh, I've forgotten what they call them. Fury? No, not Furies. Um, cursors. She is a cursor who are people who are selected and trained to protect the realm. And you have a realm where certain people can control what are called furies, which are like elemental furies. So you have water furies, earth furies, and people have different specialties. And Amara is one of these. She's traveling through the desert with her mentor and you uh, follow her storyline, but you also follow a storyline of Tavi, who is a young boy who is a shepherd who lives amongst a town that is kind of not in a large kingdom. And he does not have the ability to control furies. And so that has come at kind of a cost to him because a lot of the people around him have, and he is very curious. And I don't know how much to give you guys. Cause I, I really, I, I went in blind to the series. I didn't know anything about it. The series in general, you're following uh, the path of a kingdom that is kind of at a tipping point and can collapse or could grow, grow stronger depending on the circumstances around these characters. And you have political intrigue in this. You have some people who are, uh, I guess, spies or um, they are entrenched in the other side and are gaining information on both sides. And you also have the Furies and you have also the kind of lore of some past war that these people have been in with other kingdoms and other races that exist in this world. There's just so much going on. And the characters in this story have really grabbed my heart in the last book. There is a, there is a couple in the last book that we follow and they're, I'm not going to tell you who they are because I don't want to spoil the first book at all, but the story, the backstory for both of them, and then also them getting to know each other throughout the, the second book has, oh, it was just amazing. And then the last part of the book was super funny with them in it, like the very, very end of the second book. Uh, They're hilarious and a hoot. And I, I just, I, I want to pick up the third book immediately, which I, I know, I, I just, I feel it in my heart that the next one's going to be a five star. I have really enjoyed the series and I'm happy to continue. Next on to a book that I didn't enjoy as much and that is Jade City. So I gave Jade City a three star and the more I think about it, it probably should have been lower than that. I'm going to leave it alone because that's what I gave it at the time when I read it and I did not enjoy this and I'm really saddened by it because I was really excited to you know, get into, dive into the hype and jump on the hype train of this series. Cause I know a lot of people have loved it, but I just, I don't understand. <laughs> it's very political. It's very heavy on politics, but not so much on the fantasy. And I, I like political fantasy. I've read a lot of it at this or not. I shouldn't say a lot, but I, I've read a lot of books uh, about kingdoms, about revolts, about spies, about things like that, that I have really enjoyed. But this book for me was lacking uh, the magical elements, although they are hard pressed, or I, I don't know how to, how to describe that. They are so relied upon in the story, the fantasy elements to pull the plot along, but then they're not described and not focused on in the story. And it was very frustrating for me. You follow some characters in the book that are part of essentially a gang. Um, that controls 
a part of the city and there are rival gangs that are trying to take over their territory and there are family politics that are involved but they the gang that is in charge are the green bones and there is what is called jade magic and jade is supposed to make people stronger and essentially enable its bearers to have different powers and that's what I wanted. I wanted this, the, the kingdom itself is known as kind of like a mystery to some of the cities around it and it's getting out so people are traveling there more frequently. But I wanted more about the magical city. I wanted more about the magic. I wanted to know specifically about the training. There are so many instances in this book that I feel like they could have really dug into the fantasy elements and it sh it's just surface level the entire time of what you get about the the green bones but it's the focus of the entire book is the fact that they are green bones and that's like what their hierarchy is made from but it's never fully described and i just i didn't like that aspect of it and i don't like i didn't like the politics and i didn't care about the family enough to be okay with continuing on so I did rate this three stars. I'm not going to continue with the series. I've decided that it's just not going to be for me. And perhaps in the future, if I have enough people tell me that the things that I'm saying in this video are not true, and maybe it just wasn't the right time for me to pick up the book, maybe I will pick it up at another time. But I, I don't, it's not in the near future by any means. <laughs> The next book is Stiletto. I talked about this in my previous video with Fantasy Genre Blend, so I'm not going to talk about it a ton here. I rated it four stars. It was the sequel to The Rook, which follows a fantasy mystery where you are trying to figure out what's going on with Miffany Thomas. And Miffany, essentially, someone wakes up in Miffany's body, does not realize who they are, uh, who Miffany is, and they are given an option of staying in Miffany's body and living out life as Miffany or to run. And they have to make a decision. They have to live with the consequences of that decision. There are so many magical elements in this world. The mystery behind it is really interesting and there's like a magical school involved as well that you uh, get into and or I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't call it a school. A magical entity. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away uh, but the series has been a lot of fun. I do think I liked well, I know I liked the first book better than I liked the second. So I'm hoping that the third book in the series, which I think is the last book in the series, uh, peps up its step a little bit and that the middle book stiletto just had a little bit of middle book syndrome. There was a lot of history in the second book behind the group, uh, the magical group, we'll call them. And I, while I appreciate getting the information, sometimes it did feel a little info dumpy to me. And I would have preferred maybe having a book where we live in the historical timeline versus kind of it feeling like a history lesson that I had to memorize things along with a secondary story. Um, so that was kind of like a bummer for me with the second book, but I still rated it four stars. I still thought it was enjoyable. It has uh, some of the same characters from the first book, but it still follows the, the magical group uh, from the first book. Next is another one I didn't quite enjoy, and that is The Sons of Darkness. I ended up DNFing this book. I was so excited about this. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. I finally got it on Kindle, so this is one that I actually did buy. And it is one that I might pick up in a future far, far away. <laughs> but I reread the first 10% of this book twice, and I really enjoyed several of the storylines that we were following but I felt like the book was very disjointed and it kept going in different directions and where I ended up stopping I kept losing interest. The first two stories that we get are I think building history and maybe building like a backbone of what the story like who is telling the story and where the stories are coming from but then the actual story itself was focused on something I really didn't care about and it was dragging for me. So I ended up DNFing it like I said, I own it, so it's not like I can't come back to it at some point in time, but for right now, uh, I just think it might not be for me. I would give you guys descriptions of what's happening, but I don't know that it would be fair to you to explain what happened in the first two storylines whenever the third storyline was the one that I got stuck on, because um, I don't want you guys to start reading the book thinking that you're going to get the two storylines I was excited about. 
when I don't actually know if you get back to that. So, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're interested, I know it's, uh, Indian mythology. I know that it's fantasy. It's a big chunky book and it does involve some gods. It had, um, oracles at play too. And it, the, the writing was beautiful. I just, I got a little bored with some of the characters and some of the, where the storyline was going. The next book that I read was Blighted Stars, which I ended up reading 4.25. This was on my sci-fi journey for January, and I did just talk about this in my TBR-a-thon wrap-up, so I won't give you too much here, but essentially uh, it is a book where you follow two main characters who are trying to figure out what's going on with a... with the cradle planets. So you have human society, Earth has been destroyed, they're living on space stations, they have planets that they can live on and pull resources from, but those planets called cradle planets are dying. And so these two characters are on or travel to a cradle planet to try and figure out what's causing the death. One of them is trying to clear his family's name. The other is a kind of secret agent who ends up being implanted amongst enemies and has to figure out how to get herself out of the situation. There's a little bit of uh, enemies to lovers in this as well, but it's definitely more heavy on sci-fi than it is on the romance. I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun and it's the start of a series. So another series uh, for me to continue with. I'm not so doing so hot on my series goal, but uh, I, I sure have had fun starting them. <laughs> and the last book on this list is one that just barely makes the cut of over a 500 pages, which is 502 pages. It's called The Overstory. I also read this in January and I also talked about it on my TBR-a-thon wrap up, but I'll talk about it a little bit here. I rated this four stars and this is definitely out of my comfort zone. This is a climate fiction, and it is also maybe contemporary climate fiction. I don't know what I would call it. Um, you follow eight or so different POVs, and you follow them from when they were very young children to when they are older, and all of their storylines intertwine with trees and the nature around them. Whether or not that be uh, in a good way or in a bad way. The, one of the reasons I rated it four stars versus five stars, because I do think that it is an amazing story. It's beautifully written. Uh, the picturesque uh, images in the storyline are great. I had a hard time connecting to the characters. This is definitely more of a plot focused book. Even though you have so many characters, all of the characters are there to push the plot along. And I don't even know if plot is the right word because it also is kind of meandering, but it's more focused on trees instead of focusing on the people, if that makes sense. It's more, this story focuses on the theme of your impacts on the things around you and their impacts on you. And I do think that in using so many different characters to show the story of humanity and its relationship to trees and the nature around us was very impactful. And I think I learned more from this book. I, I learned more about our climate from this book than I think I would have from a nonfiction. Um, although I can't say that now because I, now I've written, I've read <laughs> The Hidden Life of Trees, uh, which is one of my February TBR books, which I absolutely loved. And I think I, I, because I read the overstory before it though, I was able to make so many connections uh, with that book. You can probably read them in any order, but that's just the order I read them in. And I really think that The Hidden Life of Trees impacted me much more because of the fact that I read the overstory first. So if you guys are interested in climate fiction and you don't really know where to start, I do think if you read the overstory, try and read it with something lighter because there is a lot of really heavy topics that are covered, not only with climate in that book, but also with the characters on page and some of the trauma that they go through throughout their lives and the impacts that has on them and how they grow old. It's very heartbreaking and worrisome. So just beware whenever you go into it, if you decide to read it, uh, that it's not a light read. So maybe I paired mine with a middle grade, or I, I paired it with a middle grade as I was reading it to try and make sure that I didn't get myself into a slump. And those are the 10 chunky reads that I have gotten through in the past several months. 
I have an average rating out of all of these books, not including the DNF, uh, was a 4.3. And so I definitely am still going to continue this series. I have absolutely loved my journey and I, I find it amusing because when I went to figure out what I was going to film this week for the Chunky, well, for just YouTube in general, I didn't know I was going to film Chunky check-ins, but I was like, oh, I need to check on that series and see like how many Chunky books I'd read. And I was expecting to have picked up, you know, five or six books and I had already picked up 10 and I was like, oh, I need to film a video. <laughs> and I didn't plan that at all. I had, I just, I find myself gravitating to bigger books more and more often. And in in the long run it's paid off my my ratings for these books have been amazing and i found some favorite series of all time through this and so uh, i will continue if you guys have recommendations for chonky reads or chonky series that you think i should pick up please put them in the comments down below if you are intimidated by big reads i would suggest that you give one of them a try but also make sure that you think about and give yourself some grace whenever you do pick up a chunky book because I think sometimes we don't want to pick them up because we're worried about how much time it's going to take, how many other books could we read in the place of that, things like that. And if you pick one up with the attitude of, I know this is going to take me a while, and it's okay to read multiple books at one time, so maybe you read some short books while you're picking up a long book, if you're interested. If chunky books aren't your thing and you're just here hanging out with me, that's cool too. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I've had a lot of fun and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.